Uh, Scott French from Soccer America. Um, what are your thoughts on Olivia Moultrie? What you saw from her today, what you've seen from her in camp, and what you saw from her in December? Yeah, we're really, really pleased with Olivia. Uh, she's one of these players that I'm kind of speaking in a little bit of an experience gap compared to some of, some of the other players, but certainly not a gap in talent. And so these games are really, really important. Uh, it's hard to play against teams that play with, you know, five back or multiple players in the midfield that two pretty, two pretty good banks of defenders. And she was able to find space in the pocket a few times, and uh, we really challenged her as the game went on to to continue to find space where she was instead of coming down below. And I think she accepted that challenge pretty well and, and made a difference later in, in her minutes. And obviously super pleased for her to get um, a first goal and another goal and uh, just really good steps for her. And yeah, in the camp, just how she's progressed. Yeah, she's, uh, she's taking steps every camp. She's very diligent in everything that she does in the training environment, in, in the hotels, and she's just been clamoring for a moment like this. So we're really pleased to be able to, you know, have this opportunity for her. Um, but just like everybody, she shows up, and the expectation is to be at your very best every day, be ready if your name is called upon, and she's doing a great job. Oh, hi, Twilight. Uh, Damian Calhoun, LA Daily News. Um, from game, from this game to the next game, where do you want to see the team grow in which areas you think um, for the, the game on Friday? Yeah, I'd like to see a bit more efficiency. We asked them to play with sort of this patient urgency. We knew that if we did our job, we'd push them back into our final third or their defensive third, and that's hard to do, but you have to move the ball quickly and and try and move and shift them and create these goal-scoring opportunities. And I think we we're actually a little too patient. I think that we could have served in a few more crosses uh, with less passes and created a few more opportunities. And I just want us to be a bit more efficient. I think that we'll see a totally different test in, in their next matches. And so uh, we've been planning all along for those games. And I just expect them to first make sure that we're doing what we said we were going to do. and then see what challenges actually brought our way and, and make sure that we're continuing in our style of play but adjusting to what's actually happening in front of us. Uh, hey coach, Cameron Neal with the Sporting Tribune. Uh, you mentioned Alex as you know kind of the natural you know fill in for Mia. With Mallory Swanson training with the team, why was she not the call up um, and is she ready to play in matches? Well first of all there's uh, a nine, we were placing a specific position, and Al's one of the best nines in the world, so there you go. Um, Mal's doing a great job. She looked great in camp. She's, uh, we feel it's in her best interest to continue in the progress in her club landscape. You know, to be an international athlete means that you have to do two things kind of at the same time all the time, and one of them is in your club environment while you're preparing for international duty, and while you're here, you've also got to be uh, ready to slide right back into club, and that's a lot to do all at once. So she came in, had some great days with us, looked phenomenal in training. She's still getting her fitness about her, and she'll go back to club and continue to progress on a rhythm that will allow her to be ready for future matches. Dilio Guerrero, El Rincón de Dilio, República Dominicana. El primer tiempo termina dos goles por cero ante una selección que es el primer campeonato de esta magnitud que juega. Se esperaba Estados Unidos enfrentarse a una selección como esta tan cerrada y tácticamente de esta forma. Gracias. Yeah, I think the Dominican Republic uh, has shown a 4-2-3-1. And we prepared for a 4-2-3-1, but we're also not surprised and we prepare for what ifs. What if a team does something different against us, which happens quite a bit. Uh, I think they had a really good game plan. We're very difficult to play against. I'm also really proud that we recognized that early on the field, made adjustments early on the field. And sure, I would like to have had a few more goals going into the first half, but I think that also says a lot about the Dominican Republic and also how hard it is to play against teams that sit a little bit lower and uh, you know, make such tight blocks to play against. The team USC is the biggest team in the world. So usually you score at least 10, 11, 12 goal, goals against the 
little team like the Dominican Republic. So tonight, you went on the 5 0. What did you say yourself about that score? Of course, I'm, I'm looking at our team and the team's looking at me and we understand that we need to be more ruthless, that there were opportunities and goals left on the table. But I think what you're speaking to is also a reflection of the growth in soccer. And even if you look from the last World Cup to this World Cup, I think goals in general decreased by 9% and even more, even more later in the rounds. And it's a reflection of teams being more prepared than they have been to play compact when they need to. And you'll see more and more teams playing as they did tonight, very organized, great game plan, very difficult to play against. And they did so very early on in the game. What I'd say to my team is we need to obviously get better in certain areas that we'll review, but it's also very difficult to score you know, three goals that are tap-in goals, goals that are, you know, close to one-touch finishes in the six-yard box with a team that's really compact. And the two penalty kicks were earned from the run of play as well, where we also had three or four players waiting in the box. Uh, the goals will come, and I think uh, we need to be a little bit more clinical, a little bit more ruthless, but I'm also really pleased with the direction we're going. And if we can score similar types of goals as we go along in the tournament, I'll be very pleased. At this time, we're gonna join, we're gonna transition to the media who has joined us virtually. Orlando, you can go ahead and ask your question at this time. Gracias, buenas noches. Buenas noches, coach. Orlando Castellan, Servicio Informativo en Deportes. Hoy, ¿con qué se va? ¿Con qué se queda de lo que vio dentro de la cancha? a corregir para el próximo partido contra Argentina. Yeah, again, some of my takeaways tonight are just a really good first step in getting some experience uh, in, a, in a major tournament with young players that have this gap in experience. They're very talented and need these experiences to learn again, how to play against teams that play in lower blocks, to feel the pressure of needing to score goals in a tournament where goal scoring matters a lot, uh, to have some things early on in the tournament while we've been able to keep players fresh that also are coming out of pre-seasons, and that's gonna be important so that we can peak at the right time in this tournament. Um, I think we're in a good spot. I think that having those players get this experience while keeping players fresh and being able to pull specific learnings away that we can apply as the tournament goes on is really good. And I think uh, experimenting and having the players experiment with how to move teams that like to play in blocks uh, that are organized, learning, learning how to assess and test individuals that they're playing against as well very quickly and try and capitalize on some of those things and then continue to work on specific partnerships within our squad. This is a group that doesn't get to play together very often and these are great opportunities to get certain players together and start to work out the types of things that create a bit more synergy. Jonathan, you can go ahead and ask your question at this time. Thanks. Um, Next while, Jonathan Tannenwald with Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, Jenna Eiswanger took a penalty kick late. I know she's sort of at home. I wonder what went into the decision to send her to the spot. And then Alex Morgan, when she was up there waiting, you know, the TV cameras, it's what they do. They zoom right in on the penalty kick taker space. They try to read their mind. And we were sitting here at home watching a player who hadn't scored a goal for the U.S. in 363 days finally put the ball in the net. And I was wondering what was going through your mind as you stood there waiting for her to take the kick. We spend a lot of time on all of our restarts um, or set pieces. PKs is just one of those. These are things that are pre-scripted before we get into games so they all know the penalty order if we get them. And I think you actually saw Alex hand the ball to Jenna, which was a good moment. And, you know, Jenna capitalizing is a really big thing for us. Again, these ex players with less experience, getting this experience in this moment to feel that pressure and capitalize was a great thing. And I wouldn't put Alex in that position if I didn't have total confidence and faith that she was going to put those away. So very pleased for her to come in, uh, you know, after a late call up 
and convert a goal when she was asked to, and I think we'll see you know, even better of her as the tournament goes on.